Well, um, I joined HR by accident, really. I'd uh, worked in uh, retail and financial services before, um, and probably more so started to work with people. Uh, I worked in sales and sales management, and it was all about increasing and improving the performance of people. And um, uh, when the Prudential, uh, they had some restructure changes, then I got an opportunity to join Bupa. And um, join Bupa very much from the point of view of working as uh, what at the time we called an account consultant. So it was working with the salespeople, looking at their performance, looking at their development needs. Um, so came into HR by accident through some of the skills I built up you know, in my previous careers. And um, I never looked back really, really enjoy working in HR. Yeah, I'll imagine if you're a, a business student watching this, you'll read countless books on organisational culture, and I think um, there's lots of different definitions. Um, I think our, our preferred one, and certainly in Bupa, what we prefer to focus on, is, is it's a fairly narrow description, but it's about what people do every day and how they do things. Uh, that's what is the organisational culture. It's how they speak, how they dress, um, how they're expected to perform, how organisations want them to um, you know, uh, deliver their performance and interact with customers. So f for me, put simply, it's about the things we do every day and, and how we do it. And we've got a big role uh, in, in Bupa in terms of you know, shaping the culture from a HR perspective. So there are the, the tools I mentioned earlier in terms of you know, performance management structures, how we reward people, um, how you know, people like HR operations expect people to, to work for us. Um, and it's also about how we train our people in terms of how they interact with customers. Um, a big part of, of what we do is drive behaviour, um, particularly now through you know, HR as I see it sort of has developed in the last three years. There's a lot of uh, HR involvement in things like communication and engagement of employees. Um, so we've in the last two or three years had a big handle in shaping things like competency frameworks. Um, our values have, haven't changed at all in Boo, but they've always been the same values but much more interpretation of those and how we expect people to operate and really HR are the, the custodians of that um, and if they work hand in hand with, with businesses to implement that then uh, you know as we found you can have a lot of success in sort of shaping the behaviour and ultimately the performance of the organisation. Oh, how long have you got? <laughs> there's, uh, there's, there's quite a lot involved really and uh, in terms of uh, Bupa, if you talk about talent management systems, we've probably had a system in place now for maybe three or four years. Uh, previously uh, it was quite a dated, sort of hardly spoken about, but like most organisations you have to move pretty fast in terms of the field of talent now. I, I can't think of a HR professional that's not involved in talent in some way. Um, so what we do, we do uh, a system based on a, a nine box model. Um, you know, it's quite, it's quite sort of familiar. Lots of major organisations now we use some kind of uh, box matrix uh, with sort of descriptions of performance and descriptions of potential um, that sort of define you know where we see people uh, from directors, probably sort of two or three layers down in the organisation, right through to quite middle management. Um, we do that twice a year in the organisation, uh, we gather that data, we discuss it around executive team tables and uh, sort of middle management team tables. Um, at the same time we also look at our succession plans. So it's not just about looking at sort of you know, who have we got, what's the potential, how are they performing, uh, but it's also about so who's the people who have got it for the future, who are the people who will shape our organisation, how do we as an organisation make sure that we're well prepared for any shocks in terms of people leaving us, um, how do we make sure we've got the right capability, which is, you know, for me, is a really important word in talent management. Um, and that's a consistent process that happens through the organisation. Um, and then the other half of my role, I look at talent, I look at learning and development, I think the two are inseparable, um, is to look at the development opportunities, to look at the solutions, to make sure that we've got the right things in place to help the managers manage people's performance but also when we identify those people and we think of the real bright stars of the future we make sure that they're sort of you know invested in uh, differentially so we put more investment into our highest performance um, but what's important here at Bupa is, is that um, there's, we've got talent management uh, we, you know we have talent pools we have high performance high potential but we view everybody as having some form of talent uh, and we will differentiate on investment, but we, we want everybody to bring their talent to Bupa and to use it to full potential. Well, 
Well, I mean, diversity is, is very important, and I think there's lots of ways you'd uh, define that. I mean, being in the field of health and well-being uh, and, and, you know, healthcare as a whole, um, it's, it's really important as part of our brand image that we do a lot in terms of maybe sort of people with learning disabilities uh, or other forms of disability. So not just as an employer in terms of, you know, obligations to that, but we try and go the extra mile in terms of involving uh, people who are disadvantaged uh, in terms of, you know, physically or, or mentally disadvantaged. Uh, with learning disabilities, all of our learning interventions, we also have to make sure that they're accessible uh, to people who may be dyslexic, uh, we have people who work for us who are blind in call centres, uh, so we accommodate, you know, we very often see people with guide dogs walking around our facilities. Um, and then the, from the diversity of the point of view, you know, different sort of backgrounds, different nationalities, um, we do sponsor things like obviously our graduate programme, uh, and we look, you know, right across the sort of, you know, population in terms of a broad range of people coming into our, our business. Um, we also do things such as the Career Academy in, in one of the businesses I work in, and Career Academy is about bringing people from disadvantaged educational backgrounds, from all sorts of you know uh, mainstream or ethnic minorities, and um, you know it's all about opportunity and whatever you can bring. You know, um, so it's really important, and as fundamentally, I think you know not just from a point of view of you know so that we sort of uh, not just aspire to but live our values in Bupa. It's also, as an employer, you, you really put yourselves at risk if you don't embrace diversity um, because that's where the workforce is now. It's a very diverse, not just in terms of uh, whether you're an ethnic minority or whether you've got a disability or even just whether you want to work 16 hours or 40 hours. Everything's about diversity and making sure you've got the right people uh, to make your business work. Yeah, well, I'd say um, uh, I could probably start this with a story actually. We're at Career Academy last year, we had somebody who joined us. Uh, about 10 or 12 people worked in our, in our Salford and Staines offices. And somebody joined us and said, uh, I've signed up to the programme because I want to work in HR. And we said, why do you want to work in HR? I said, well, really it's to sort of dispel the myth that my mum thinks we're just here to hire and fire people. And that's probably quite a dated sort of personnel view type of things, you know. Um, and hopefully there aren't many organisations that, that still work like that. Um, but um, I, I think come to HR and there's such a wide range of disciplines now and also in, in good businesses that have good HR functions they're very connected to the business, they're very commercial operations. So increasingly you know from a learning development perspective a lot of my work still focuses on you know, behavioural interventions and solutions but also on the technical capability of people and you do have to get very close into understanding the business uh, whether it's from a finance perspective or a marketing uh, HR or a service or a sales perspective and it gives you such a broad insight into how businesses work um, so for me I, I you know in describing my career I sort of come to HR from a sales and uh, financial services background but equally I see people now going from HR into more commercial disciplines in, in businesses so it can be a springboard into broader roles in organisations.